Welcome to Morning Coffee in Kyoto. Um, today's host is my pink My Melody mug. There was way too many Mys. <laughs> um, I am sitting here trying to think about what I should talk about today, and I don't know. I was just thinking of yesterday it was 37 degrees. I think it might have been more than that, but 37 degrees is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was very hot, and my air conditioner is having a really hard time keeping up. I would really be interested in finding out how much energy a typical U.S. central air conditioning unit for a, I don't know, three-room house uses, how much electricity it uses compared to how much electricity a Japanese air conditioner uses. I'm sure it'll vary with all the models, but I know it got hotter than this sometimes in Florida, and the central air is just so much more powerful, so it must take up more electricity, right? It's always hot in Kyoto in the summer, but the air conditioning, because it's the not central air air conditioning, it's the spot air conditioning, unless you're inside a business. I mean, I suppose if you're inside a business or you're really rich and you had central air, it would be different. But I've always felt that it was likely environmentally friendly because of the fact that, you, I mean, you have to be using less electricity. I'd really like to find it out. I'm sure I can Google it. I just don't know exactly what to Google. Kilowatt hours. But if you are used to central air and you come here, you will feel much hotter. It is hot. Um, I'm used to it now. So yesterday it was 30 degrees in my house, which is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I can't remember if I would ever have felt cool in Florida with my thermostats at, at 86. But here outside it was 100 degrees and inside it was 86 degrees and I felt just fine. So I believe it uses less electricity and I believe my body is adjusting to it over time. But there are many a day when I wish that I had central air again. <laughs> One of my favorite stories was when we had some exchange students from Canada come in March, March. And my students had been to Canada in January. Now this is like Montreal in January. And this was during the year when it was like extra, extra cold. There were like iceberg chunks floating down the rivers and such. And my students were just absolutely frozen in Canada. And then two months later, so in a much warmer Kyoto, no, no snow, no ice chunks. And these Canadian students who had been through that exact same winter with them came to our school. And the Canadians they would not stop going on and on about how freezing they were here in Kyoto. And they were just cold. And I really thought about how, like if you're in a building, if you're in a school building in North America, the classrooms are heated or cooled. The hallways are heated or cooled. But here, it is the individual room. There is a different AC unit in every room. And you come into the room, you turn it on, and you cool it down. Then you leave, you shut it off. You come into the room, you turn it on, you heat it up. 
Neely Vishadraf. And these students would walk into the halls and just freeze because, you know, we have the windows open. Why do you have the windows open? It's freezing outside. Air exchange, um, which we know very well this year with Corona, but flu and other types of viruses, the, the more you have air trapped, the more they bounce around. So you leave the hallway windows open because they're not heated anyways. I am sure that if it got truly, truly frigid, in fact, I've been here in January when it dips down, you know, we close the windows, but it's never that cold. It usually hovers around zero Celsius. Um, so you leave the windows open to air the place out. Um, that being said, I'm from Florida. I get cold, but you layer. I have an appreciation for central air and central heating, but I also have an appreciation for saving electricity and acclimating to accepting higher and lower temperatures than you would if you were exposed to central air. And also learning how to dress. I still used to go out without scarves. And my friends who were from the northern part of North America would say, Where is your scarf? Your neck. And I was like, what the heck? What do you mean your neck? You don't have to cover your neck. Yes. Yes, you do. You have to cover your neck. But when you're from Florida and you spend not only most of the time in a beautiful climate that usually hovers around, you know, 37 degrees, uh, let's see, Fahrenheit, um, maybe the lowest you get is in the low 40s and the highest you get is, you know, close to around 100 degrees, or at least it's how it used to be, I don't know what it is now, but that's what it used to be. Um, yeah, you, you don't have to deal with cold temperatures too terribly much. And uh, you spend most of the time inside the central heating or the central air, so it's not that bad. So you don't know you have to wear a scarf. But I think it's important to know that you need to wear a scarf. I've learned a lot about dressing and dealing with weather and dealing with just existing in a climate rather than depending on the central heating and central air. I don't know where I'm going with this. Suffice it to say that it is hot outside because it is the summer and it is Kyoto. And Kyoto is a basin. Kyoto City is a basin surrounded by mountains and so the heat just sits and doesn't move. But even so, um, you deal with your small air conditioning to cool yourself down and you're fine. But don't expect central heating or central air unless you are in a business place, some sort of business building or I don't know, some really expensive hotel. Because even the hotels here, you and your, take your key and you go to your room, you have to put your key in a slot by the door and that will activate your air conditioning and your electricity in your room. It's very eco-friendly and I do like that. I wonder what the net ecological footprint is of a Japanese eco-friendly hotel, which by the way, they don't go out of their way to make them eco-friendly. They just happen to be eco-friendly because they're not just constantly wasting all the electricity. But I have heard people argue that if you have the temperature set and maintain it, that it doesn't cause some, it doesn't use so much electricity. And I don't know. I would really be interested to study an American regular hotel versus a Japanese regular hotel and the net footprint based on air conditioning alone. All right, I'm just going to stop because I rambled on long enough. I don't even know what I can use of this video. I'll probably just post it 
ramblings on air conditioning. But I'm out of coffee. I've been out of coffee for a while. I just didn't know how to end. Have a great day, everybody. Stay cool. It is hot. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, stay warm. And have a great day. Man. <sighs> My brain is not completely awake in the morning. <laughs> I should probably make these videos. Welcome to morning after coffee in Kyoto, so I could at least think. 